community activists, community leaders, and religious leaders, and people in gangs or really hood, no matter what the race is, there are so many sexual deviants among them. I'm Queen with Soft Eye Boutique here to talk about how being black community minded and black conscious community minded put me in situations to where I was seemingly engulfed by sexual deviance and their enablers. Okay, so one of the biggest mind tricks that being community minded plays on black girls and women is to disregard their internal compasses, their internal compasses of alerting them to danger. So you get really comfortable, you learn not to really question things, or you may be in a situation to where you are taught and brainwashed to believe that no matter what somebody does, especially a black boy or male, no matter how horrible it is, that they deserve a second chance, okay? And you need to give them, you specifically as the black girl or woman, you need to disregard what they did and you you need to be the one to give them a second chance. Not the United States government, not these state governments, not these municipalities, you black girl and woman. So I can just remember throughout a lot of my life how I was brainwashed into thinking that way and believing that way. I specifically remember one of my grandmothers, She like if we would be out with her in public and there was like a real raggedy, stank, homeless black man, whether he was young or old, she would stop and she would go out of her way to help them because we had to help clean the black man up, help pick the black man up. So I really kind of, that really kind of started from her and I just kind of adopted that model. Um, but I have broken out of it. <laughs> like I went to New Orleans, like I've been going to New Orleans a lot this year uh, because there's a lot of attorney things that we do out there because the Supreme Louisiana Supreme Court is in New Orleans. And so I actually grew up in New Orleans. That's where my grandmother would, you know, do all of this stuff for these home, clearly homeless and trifling black boys and men. And I just remember I was passing all these homeless people. And I'm not talking about homeless people in and of itself, but I remember I was passing all these homeless people, these homeless black guys, and if you don't really know the stench of homeless people, they have a really particular stench. And it's the same stench that people in jail have. So um, I know it as soon as I smell it. Um, and I remember thinking as I passed them, like, if this was me just a couple of years ago, I would have like reached in my purse, gave this guy some money, tried to speak life into him, would have got him something to eat. And, you know, would have did all of this crazy stuff that I know... It never would have happened if I was like a homeless woman on the street because they would like beat me and rape me. So <laughs> I was like really proud of myself for that. But back to the topic of this video. Okay, so I was placed in so many situations where I was working arm in arm and shoulder to so shoulder to shoulder with a lot of sexual deviance even some who was actually registered on a sex offense registry and I didn't even realize because in that the state of mind that I was in at that time I was just so trusting because this was a black man trying to help the community or he looked as a leader or an activist or something like that now one thing I will say that I'm extremely proud of myself despite all of that as soon as I found out who they were, I was gone. Gone pecan, like we say in Louisiana. Like, I don't want nothing to deal with you. Even if they went to jail and they did their time and they got out and they got their rights restored and all the type of stuff, I still don't want anything to do with them because they're victims. 
they still have a life sentence. That's what people don't understand. Well, the abusers understand it. Okay, so two particular instances. That this which is black community, mind it. it wasn't black conscious community because that's a whole different talk. But two specific instances when I was doing a lot of community activism and outreach and really out there pounding the pavement. I did not know that these guys who were considered leaders that I was working hand to hand had literal charges, sex charges, and they were on the sex offender registry. I did not know that. But as soon as I found out, I left those organizations. I don't talk to those people anymore. I don't want anything to do with them. And it is what it is. So, I mean... I guess congrats that you did your time and you're doing community service, but that doesn't change who you are at your core. I guess that's between them and they God. It is what it is. Obviously, they live in life. That's what I tell y'all all all the time. People, they, society loves to support them. They love to support them. They love that story from, you know, sinner to redeemed, the sinner to saved and all of this type of stuff. And I just didn't, like, I just can't, like, even now, like, now that I'm in my right mind, I know good and well that if this is a guy, whether I know him or not, one of the first things I'm doing is a background check and checking the sex offender registry to see what is going on. You know, um, because a wolf can only change their clothing for so long. That's that's just, it is what it is when it comes to that. But that just goes to show you how deeply ingrained this really is in our culture. And it's amongst all races as well, because we see that in community activism. We see this among religious leaders, you know, the cult leaders. That's like the recipe for a cult that the leader has to be a sexual deviant. It is what it is. Even the black conscious community group that I was a part of. Now, I don't know how true this is, but I do remember that the people who were teaching me the teachings of it, it was like closer to the end, right before I realized that I was going to leave. And I was trying to kind of get my thoughts together about how I was going to mentally, you know, break away before they left me. Um, One of the guys who were teaching, who was teaching me, he, he said it very casually, like, oh, yeah, like, he had a baby with a 15-year-old. And I said, what? Yeah, and then he just skipped to the next thing. And then I went back, I said, well, if your daughter was 15, would you let her deal with, like, a 30-something-year-old, 40-something-year-old man? He was like, no. And I was like, oh, okay. And I left it at that. And no, I'm not talking about the group who y'all think I'm talking about. <laughs> Because it is what it is when it comes to that. Clearly, those people don't care um, because that group is still around. But, you know, you see the same thing with the F, is it FLDS or, yeah, Fundamental Latter-day Saints. You see it's the same with FLDS. You see with all these other groups. So they don't care. This is what I try to really stress to people. They do not care that these men and these women are sexual deviants. They just flat out don't care. Also, I'll never forget, I went to this ancestral meeting. I'm being very vague with the name because I just don't want to draw in the name of the particular group. So we were at a beach, venerating our ancestors, doing all of these types of wonderful things. And this particular guy, who is actually a councilman in the DMV area. I'll just say that. He gets on the mic after people, you know, giving honor to the ancestors and all this type of stuff. This clown gets on the mic and he was like, yeah, you know, all praise is due to the ancestors for allowing us to come together and all this type of stuff. And I want to give a shout out to all the ladies and uh, they got them pretty toes out. And, ooh, and he just started going on and on about feet. 
that should have been a red flag to me because uh, that same night he tried to attack my feet. He tried to rape my feet. So he has a really sick foot fetish and he, he really tried to rape my feet. And I remember I, I tried to, and y'all, I got, <laughs> I don't have like the, the feet that can be on feet finder. Okay. So like I got some, some, okay. Your girl don't have feet finder type feet. <laughs> so I'm like, this dude is really crazy because he was just going crazy over my feet. And he tried to rape my, my feet. And um, that was very traumatizing. Um, I remember I confided in a couple of people and, you know, they didn't care. And clearly they didn't care. People knew that he had this very sick foot fetish and he is now a councilman in the DMV area. And, you know, he got this African name and, you know, he's in the Divine Nine fraternity and, you know, doing all these types of things. Ex-military, you know, just looks really good on paper. But everybody knows this about him and they do not care. They don't care at all whatsoever. Um, Let's see. You know, it's just so many other stories that I really can just go into about this. But, you know, I pretty much touched everything that I needed to touch. Because if I was just talk, talking about it, it, I can just really go on and on and on. So this is something that I wanted to share with you ladies to let you know the type of mind state that being woke and being in the conscious community, it does to you. Like, it lowers your defense mechanisms and it makes you just too trusting of people who you shouldn't trust at all whatsoever <laughs> with anything and once you one of the the symptoms that's showing that you are shifting from that mindset is that you start to put your safety first and if you have children put your yours and your children's safety first okay so that is a sign that you are shifting out of that mind state and that's a really good sign that you're just not allowing just random men even random women even people who you feel like you know to just come in your personal space just to be around you in close <coughs> quarters or for you to really work with them you know the fact that I was like the, the two community leaders that I was telling y'all, and I'm talking about these two guys, they have, they're all over Louisiana newspapers. Like they are really praised in Louisiana. They testify in front of the legislature and all types of things. And if you look at their record, it's really horrible records. And they actually did those things. They actually did them. And, had I known going in, of course not, you know, but like I said, that's one thing I'm really proud of myself for as soon as I found out, chunk the deuces, bye, I don't want nothing to deal with this, I don't care what you've done for the community, that person's life changed forever, so it is what it is. <laughs> So uh, definitely don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment below. I comment back, y'all. Queen with Soft Eye Boutique.